Quran chapter 2, verse 172. O you who have believed, eat from the good things which we have provided for you, and be grateful to Allah if it is indeed him that you worship. Genesis chapter 1, verse 29. Behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the face of all the earth, and every tree with the seed in its fruit, you shall have them are for food. We, the religious leaders from different counties and representing various faiths, having met in Nairobi from 8th to 9th November 2022, are greatly concerned by the recent cabinet's decision to lift the ban on the cultivation, consumption, and importation of genetically modified organisms in Kenya, which have been in place since 2012. As religious leaders, we defend and protect the sanctity of human life from conception to natural death. Our concerns are as follows. One is lack of public participation. Whereas there was public participation that led to the banning of GMOs in Kenya in 2012, we are highly disappointed that this time round there was no public participation in lifting the ban. The rushed decision to lift the ban on the importation of GMOs into the country lacked public participation in line with the Constitution of Kenya. No public consultations were done and the views of the public were not considered in the decision to lift the ban, which essentially curtails the freedom of all Kenyans to choose what they want to eat or not. Food is a basic human right, and any decision on it must be made through proper public participation in line with the Constitution of Kenya. Two, risk of losing our national heritage, culture, and livelihoods. The Constitution of Kenya, Article 11, stipulates and recognizes culture as the foundation of the nation and as the cumulative civilization of the Kenyan people and nation. Article 11.3b calls upon the Parliament to enact registrations that recognize and protect the ownership of indigenous seeds and plant varieties, their genetic and diverse characteristics, and their use by the communities of Kenya. We are disturbed that the lifting of the GMO ban does not take into consideration the constitutional requirement. A GMO crop, once released in the open, reproduces via open pollination and interacts genetically with the natural varieties of the same crop, producing what is called genetic contamination. According to a study published in Nature, one of the world's leading scientific journals, BT corn had contaminated indigenous varieties of corn tested in Oaxa, Mexico. The local farmers will lose their indigenous seeds through this genetic contamination. Just like GMO seeds and hybrid seeds, replanting GM and hybrid seeds cannot be sustained as their productivity decreases from season to the other, and therefore farmers will eventually depend on sold seeds, hence making the farmers more vulnerable. Thirdly, safety concerns GMOs link to harmful synthetic inputs. Genetic modification and increased pesticides use go hand in hand. Over 99% of all commercialized GM crops are engineered to tolerate one or more herbicides to have an insecticidal effect or both. Some of these inputs, such as grisophyte-based Roundup, are scientifically known to have adverse negative health effects, including their close link to cancer. Numerous court cases 
are on record in the U.S. as victims pursue justice from cancerous health complications resulting from the glycophate-based inputs usage. Equally, Kenyans were never made aware of the findings of the Professor Deuri Committee on the safety and use of GMOs in food in Kenya. Fourthly, the challenges in the agri sector, agriculture sector are far beyond just introducing GMOs. While we are aware that there is a current food and hunger crisis in Kenya, the challenges around food security require interventions that are beyond just introducing GMOs. Biotechnology is diverse, but we urge utmost caution as we look at genetically engineered crops. However, it is on record that some, some of the progressive nations have maintained a ban on GMOs owing to its negative implications on the health and the livelihoods of their people. For instance, poor budget allocation to the agriculture sector is a major challenge. Only about 4% of the budget is allocated to the agricultural sector, yet it is a mainstay economy for more than 60% of Kenyans. This has limited extension support and general support to the sector at national and county levels. Secondly, there are different parts of the country where there is plenty of food, yet other Kenyans are dying of hunger. Why can't we address these challenges, including investing in farm diversification or indigenous foods which are culturally right and enhance our heritage? Fifthly, risk of losing organic premium markets. One of the characteristics of, organi of organic foods is food free from GMOs and free from harmful inputs. Kenya relies on agricultural exports for a major share of its foreign earnings. GMOs will put organic agriculture at risk in the country since cont contamination will happen and no country will trust our organic exported crops. This is worrying for our economy, bearing in mind that globally there is a growing trend in the demand for organic foods by cons consumers. Six, why have other country, countries banned GMOs? We are aware that GMO crops are grown in just over 30 countries around the world out of 195 countries and by approximately 17 million farmers, most of them in developing countries. GMO crops are banned in nearly 40 countries, more than those growing the GMOs, including the following. In Europe, France, Germany, Austria, Greece, Hungary, Netherlands, Latvia, Lithuania, Luxembourg, Bulgaria, Poland, Denmark, Malta, Slovenia, Italy, and Croatia. In Africa, we have Algeria and Madagascar. In Asia, we have Turkey, Kajasastan, Bhutan, and Saudi Arabia, while in the Americas, we have Belize, Ecuador, Peru, and Venezuela. We may ask, why have these countries banned GMOs? Is there something they know that we do not know? Why is GMO still a controversial subject in this day and time? And this is our call to action for the Kenyan government. We urge that the ban be immediately reinstated and an inclusive public participatory process be instituted to look into long-term and sustainable solutions to issues affecting food insecurity and agricultural productivity in the country. A second, make public the Professor Deuri Committee report and create public awareness on the safety of GMOs rather than pronouncing GMO concerns as myths.
Thirdly, we need to protect our local and indigenous seeds and foods as envisaged in Article 11, 3B of the Constitution and embrace safe and sustainable food production approaches such as organic agriculture. A fourthly, increase budgetary allocations to the agricultural sector while at the same time addressing the root causes of food insecurity in Kenya. And fifthly, make deliberate programs and policies that invest in climate adaptation mechanisms, including water conservation and harvesting. A six, institute clear legal frameworks to check on illegal introduction of GMOs related products into our country. And seven, put in place mechanisms and frameworks that promote and support patenting of indigenous plant and animal materials. In conclusion, we urge the govern, government to take note of the above, con, above concerns. In the Bible, the book of Proverbs 22 and verse 3, a wise person sees danger and take precaution, but inexperienced keep going and suffer the consequences. This is our call to the nation as far as our government is concerned. Thank you. Want to ask a question? To me, Zungumzia Mapendekezo, Kada Wakada, Jambula Kwanza, Ambalo to me, Zungumzia, Nikusiana, Na Uharamu Ulio Kuepo, Kusiana, Na Mfumo Ajemo, Na Tumesema Kwamba. Tunataka iendelezwe uh, uharamu wa matumizi ya mfumo wa GMO na serikali isitishe mara moja mpango wa kuhalalisha uzalishaji vyakula au ukulima kwa kutumia mfumo huo wa GMO. Uh, pia tumesema kwamba wa Kenya hawajahusishwa uh, ifaavyo katika maamuzi ambayo yalotolewa ya kuweza kuhalalisha matumizi ya GMO eh, bimana kwamba public participation haikufanyika na hatukuhusishwa kama wa Kenya eh, ni lazima kwamba inavyosema katiba lazima kuwe na maoni na kuhusishwa uh, kwetu kama wa Kenya tatu pia tunasema kifungo cha katiba uh, katika kifungo cha 11 kinazungumzia tamaduni na turathi zetu kama wa Kenya hasa inazingatia uh, kulinda mazao yetu ya kiasilia ambayo tumesema hayo ndio yamekuwa turathi zetu kwa siku zote tangu jadi pia tumezungumzia uh, madhara ya kiafya ambayo imenasibishwa na matumizi ya mfumo huo wa GMO ambayo tunasema kwamba ni lazima serikali itubainishie na iweke wazi matokeo ya jopo ambalo limekuwepo hapa awali la profesa Theory ambayo tunajua ndio jopo peke yake ambalo lilikuwa limezungumzia swala hili la GMO na hata vile vile tunasema kwamba serikali katika kuhalalisha GMO kwa sasa lazima pia tuelezwe kama kuna jopo yoyote ambayo ya wataalamu imeka na wakaweza kutoa ushauri kuwa kuna uhalali wa kuweza kutumia ili tutumie e, taratibu nzuri kama kufuata jopo kama ilivyokuwa ilifuatwa jopo ya profesa Thauri hapo awali wakati ilipokuwa inaharamishwa A, pia tumezungumzia kwamba kuna tatizo a, ya kwamba hatuna usawa katika uzalishaji wa vyakula hapa nchini bimana kuna sehemu ambazo zina vyakula zaidi na kuna sehemu ambavyo vina uhaba wa vyakula ama uzalishaji katika sehemu zingine ni chache kwa hivyo la msingi ni kwamba tunaomba serikali kwanza iweze kusawazisha hayo iwekwe sawa kwamba kuna sehemu kwa mfano ambazo baadhi ya vyakula 
hata vinapeanwa kwa nyama kwa kukosa soko na kuna sehemu ambazo vyakula haviko. Kwa hivyo iwekwe sawa kwanza serikali jaribu kusawazisha uh, iwe equal katika kila sehemu ili kwamba eh, twende mbele kuangalia kwa ni alafu mwisho tuangalia ni kwa nini eh, yani address the root causes kwa nini kila wakati na kila mwaka tuna hili tatizo la uhaba wa uzalishaji wa vyakula katika baadhi za sehemu eh, serikali isitoroke katika majukumu bali lazima iingie ndani iangalie kwa kinaga ubaga sababu na matatizo haswa ni yapi ili we address the causes tuangalie yale ambayo yanasababisha hayo kabla hatujaangalia katika mambo ambayo tunasema ni quick fix ambayo tunataka kufanya kwa haraka asanteni okay asanteni sana sasa kama kuna we are looking at uh, how can we address food security in the country and is gmo the solution to food insecurity and as religious leaders Tunaona ya kwamba GMO is not the solution. It's not the silver bullet. For we equally need to consider climate smart agriculture as a solution to food insecurity. The negative impacts of the GMO as pronounced by various journals and articles have their own impact. Yet the food insecurity also provide a way in which nations may be driven to look into GMOs as a solution to food insecurity. So it's not a case of losers and winners, but how can the Kenyan government protect the Kenyan citizenry against the adverse effects of GMO products and at the same time provide the mechanisms for clarity in understanding the effects of the GMOs and also a call what are the findings of Professor the URI's uh, committee on the GMOs, <coughs> even as pronouncements are being made in regard to the legalization of GMOs? So it's not about losers and winners. Mm -hmm. It's the safety of Kenyans and a call to reflect on climate, safe agriculture as the solution to food insecurity. Thank you. It's a wrong and simplistic uh, view that GMO is fix it all. The truth is we have shoot, uh, with food uh, shortage in the country. People are dying. The fact that people are dying, you cannot pick one thing and fix it to solve all the problems. Um, we as a faith-based uh, organization and faith leaders, we are aware there are many other options that have not been considered. Uh, one of them is a, a good agro-ecological um, um, systems that needs to be observed. We need uh, more uh, water harvesting in the country. We need uh, to increase irrigation in the country, either in small-scale farming or in large-scale farming. And that, so not, uh, it is not very simplistic to say one thing will fix it all. We are also in agreement that uh, biotechnology are many, not GMO. So we are specifically saying that genetic um, transfiguration of one uh, species to another as a religious, uh, is a religious issue, as the, um, um, you know, it has been read, both Christians and Muslim, but we have many other biotechnology that can are better and are in use and can also help to solve the problem. Thank you, Bishop. Thank you. Uh, Thank you, Sister Modesta. Uh, what I would say is that the faith, the faith, uh, or uh, we as the faith leaders, or as the churches um, in Kenya, we do not fight the government. So before we make any statement, before we say yes or no to anything that the government has proposed, we first of all consult. So there has been a lot of consultations internally among ourselves to see how best can we approach this issue. And the question we're asking ourselves is what has changed 
because the ban was effected in 2012. Now we are in 2022. Ten years, have we seen anything? What has changed in GMOs that now it has to be? There's a reason for us to accept that now we can, we can leave the ban. But we're also consulting um, uh, the technical people, getting advice before now we face the government. But forums like this are the foundations. Now we are laying the foundation for our argument to be able to face the government officials. So a statement like this is directed to the government and there will be many more coming. And the call we are sending to the government is kindly let us uphold dialogue before we get into uh, concluding on these issues that require public participation. Thank you. Come on. Before 2012, uh, and then after that, you know, the ban, uh, the, the, the idea of introducing GMO was on, if you remember, and then it died out. Then it has come again. I'm sure uh, you are getting the, the core element of our concern is that we as uh, uh, church leaders, religious leaders, we have our people, they're asking, what is this GMO? What are the dangers of it? That is answered in what you call public participation. And um, that is what will inform us. And, uh, but you see, well, um, the GMO comes at a time when there's drought and the pugs of the drought are on. So now it looks like everybody is saying, now what we have been waiting, uh, we have found it. What is it? It is GMO. We are saying, yes, um, GMO is a biotechnology, but there are others and technologies. So uh, we, we believe uh, uh, a collection of all technologies should be involved in agriculture uh, because we are uh, also in, you know, we are aware. Into the production of cattle or animal feed. What animals eat you eventually end on your plate? And so that is why we are saying GMOs are not the silver bullet to food insecurity. So there are other means in which animal feed can be produced, which is more healthier than what we may get from the GMO uh, produce to animals. What was your question, sister? I think a multi-sectoral multi approach to food insecurity needs to be put in place in terms of uh, food harvesting, in terms of storage. So where there is plenty of food in whatever season needs to be harvested and properly stored. So we could look into investing more resources to answer the storage of food. Uh, we have cabbages where there is plenty of rain. We have potatoes, but yet we cannot be able to take such food to other parts of the country uh, which are hit by uh, uh, sun. So it's a case of a multi-sectoral approach to food insecurity over and above uh, climate uh, safe agriculture in our country. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yes, 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 we do. We do. We do. Pardon? Yeah. A picture. Yes, it's the same. Props. Yeah. 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 Yeah